In this video, I will go over some of the options you will have if you're going to connect a stairway to a floor framing system with TJI Trust Joist. And there's not a lot of information on this, so I think the best thing I could possibly suggest would be to use some type of a structural beam, not a piece of construction standard lumber, either a rim joist or some type of a engineered product that the manufacturer would recommend when building these types of floors. And for the most part, we're going to be toenailing the stringers into a ledger or into a beam, into something, and in nailing a ledger if we're going to use one into one of the other framing components, like the wall framing studs, a beam, or the truss joist. So here's one way that you can do it with a structural beam if you have a situation like this. Another way would be to use the rim joist that is going to be provided by the manufacturer. And again, we would be in nailing the ledger into the floor framing system or even the wall framing and toe nailing the stringers into the ledger. If we don't want to use a ledger, we could always make the stringers a little bit longer and then use some type of blocks between the stair stringers. Or we could even extend the height of the wall. I've seen this done before and don't see why something like this wouldn't work with most floor framing projects using truss joist. And the only thing I don't really like about top flange hangers in a situation like this, where it's going to be a high traffic area, is that it could produce a gap between the bottom of the floor sheathing and the top of the floor framing irregularities in the floor and of course squeaking in this area. And I know some people are like, no, it's not going to be that big of a gap. However, I have seen it cause problems before in these areas. And don't forget that you might need to check with your local building authorities, structural engineers, or building designers to verify these framing methods. Next up, let's go ahead and install a double truss joist. And according to one of the manufacturers, you will need to install backing and filler blocks, which might require a strip of plywood or OSB in between the bottom and the top cords to use a double truss joist like this. Now I did notice that the manufacturer also suggested that you're going to need to figure out if the double joist will support the concentrated load from the stair stringers. And of course I won't be able to provide you with that information. However, I will be able to provide you with what the inside filler block would look like. And in some cases, it might just simply be a 2x6 or a 2x12 to create more or less a solid beam, something that we will actually be able to put some nails into to connect our stringers to the joist. Now, this is a method I've actually used before, so haven't had a problem with something like this. However, this is a method that I haven't ever used, and that would be to use some type of building hardware. And this is actually one of the recommendations from one of the larger product manufacturers of Trust Joist. However, they did not provide us with any recommended building hardware that we could use to attach the stringers to the double Trust Joist. So again, you might need to check with a structural engineer or local building authorities for some type of a hardware recommendation. And like I mentioned earlier in the video, I think what an engineer or what the product manufacturer is going to be hoping for is that you will be able to attach this to either a rim joist type of material or some type of an engineered beam.